Hello, it's Charles again, and we're going to be doing another how-to about the M0100 mouse. This time it's going to be all about a retro connector M0100 USB optical mouse conversion kit. I know it's a mouthful, but uh, basically turns an M0100 into an optical USB mouse to work with a modern Mac or PC. So let's get started. There's two different versions of the kit. One will work with one style of mouse and one will work with the other. The main differentiating factor is if you look underneath you'll see there's two screws on the older kind and there's just one screw on the other. So the two screw kit will come with a round PCB and a couple of other parts. So let's get disassembling. Now with the older style what you do is you take the two screws out, you pop open the, the front of the mouse and then push forward from the back and it should all just come apart. Now be careful with the spring on the button because the spring does like to fly out if you're not careful. So kind of a flimsy little spring but it, uh, it will get lost real quickly if you are not careful. Now if you look inside you'll see this style mouse has a six pin connector here and that should just pop right off. There's no retaining clip or anything else, no screws to take off for that and there's one other screw to take the main body of the mouse apart. And you can set that aside, you're not going to need it for the conversion kit. Just take all that out of the mouse and you should be left with the mouse ball and the little rotating clip locky thing So there's the round PCB, a little white shim with a lens on it, a little white 3D printed piece for the mouse button, and a small rubber gasket. And we'll start assembling by putting the, the round white piece in. It should only fit one direction. It should be nice and snug. On top of that, we put the PCB and make sure that the LED is facing into the lens. And then sandwich that with the white hinge piece and it will sit right on top of the board and needs to push down really tight to hold the board in place. Now this is the only real tricky part. It's a little rubber gasket. And it goes on this post in the back where the screw hole is. And it's like a little rubber band. You just have to stretch it just enough to get over the end of the post and cinch it down. And that will hold the PCB in place. And that way you don't require any screws or glues or anything else and you can always take and put the PCB back in from the original mouse. So you pop the cable on. I realize I put the wrong hinge riser on in the first part of the video, so I've swapped that out with the correct one here. It should have a smooth top instead of uh, the cup-shaped top. Make sure everything is still in place and look at the strain relief. It should say top on the top. Put that right into the slot on the base of the mouse and then Reversing the process from opening, you put the back part in first and then snug down the front. And I've left the mouse button off here so you can see the riser part tucks right up against the top of the mouse and you can use that to push down securely the riser and it'll hold the board right where it needs to be. So if you can't get it down by hand you can use the leverage from the top of the mouse. So then you put your mouse button into the top. Make sure the spring is attached to the little retainer there. And then just like we did before, strain relief in, snap the back in place, and then press down on the front.
and now you've got your mouse all together. Make sure the mouse button clicks properly, it's not hung up on something and the spring's in the right place, and then reassemble with the two screws that you removed at the beginning of the process. And now we'll look at the other main variant here. This one has just one screw on the bottom. And the internals are similar, except it has a larger rectangular PCB. And so we'll just take the one screw out of the bottom. And this one just assembles the opposite of the other. So you take the back part of the mouse, pop it out, and push down from the front, and it all comes out together. And of course, this one had some uh, crud and dust bunnies stuck inside it. You'll immediately notice the difference. Uh, spring here is a much stiffer spring. It's also a smaller diameter. This will also tend to fly out, get stuck in the carpet. And uh, if you lose that, then the mouse just won't work anymore. Just as before, you take out this one screw here. And the whole assembly should pop right out. First, we'll need to get to this cable here, and there's going to be some complicated issues with this cable uh, as we get to that a little bit later on. So pull that out. It should come straight out. And then there's the board and the assembly underneath it with the ball, a little lock ring. Set those aside. And now you insert the PCB right in place just as before on top of the white lens assembly, and then on top of that is the hinge riser. Again, it needs to get pushed down nice and snug so that the PCB is at the right level. It should fit nice and tight, and then we get the little rubber gasket. Again, slip it down over the post, push it down nice and tight. Between that and the riser, the PCB and everything should stay nice and secure. So let's take a look at this cable. Over the years, the M100 had a bunch of different variations, and many of them kept things fairly consistent. But this cable has changed a few times during that run. The older, darker cable here on the left does not have an index tab. The lighter cable here on the right is still the same pin assignment, but it does have a little index tab. And that can cause problems when you try to plug it into the kit. So if you have an older one, like this, it does not have the index tab on it, you should be able to just pop it right in. It should only fit in one way. However, the index tab, the little white piece, will get in the way. So, easy enough to fix. Take some needle nose pliers, or an X-Acto knife, or some wire cutters, whatever you have, and you can either pull that back or just break it off entirely. But you do have to be sure that when you put the cable back on, that the little index tab there goes out. Otherwise, your pin assignments will be all backwards. So then we continue with the rest of the assembly. The assembly on this one's a little bit trickier, mainly because the spring is a little bit stiffer, and it's hard to get the mouse button to sit right where it needs to be while you're putting everything together. So in this case, we put the mouse button on top of the hinge assembly, and it should ride right to where it clicks on the button. So push it down into the riser there, and as it hinges, it should press down on the button. Nice, solid click. So leave that sort of balanced on top, and then using one hand to hold it in place, stick one finger through the hole in the top of the mouse, hold the button in place that way, and then slide the body of the mouse over top. Give it a couple of test clicks to make sure that it's in the right place. And 
Reassemble with the one screw that you set aside before, and it's all together. The final step, of course, is just plug it in. The conversion kit should have come with a dongle that connects the 9-pin end of your mouse to a standard USB Type-A mail connector. Now, just to note, the dongle doesn't do anything other than connect those four pins from the PCB in the kit. You cannot convert a serial mouse into USB just by plugging in this dongle. If you do, it may very well damage your USB port. That being said, it's pretty much plug and play. You plug the 9-pin end to your M100 mouse and the USB end into your computer, and you'll know it's working when the light on the bottom of the mouse starts to light up. Nice red LED glow means it's working. You should be able to mouse right away. There's no additional drivers necessary, no other software to install. And that's it. The conversion kit is available at my website, retroconnector.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and leave comments down below.